<clears throat> good day and welcome to today's sermon. My name is Pastor Lawrence. It's good to be back with you as always. And um, today we're going to talk about God's love. I'm inviting you to come with me on this journey. First, I'm going to share from the Bible and then also my personal experience that I had with, with, with God's love. And I pray and hope by the end of this sermon that you will really um, get to a better understanding of firstly how God loves you and then secondly how you can love him back. You know, it's, this is not just a one-way um, direction. It's not a one-way love. It is in two ways. <coughs> well, many people think that love is the major theme of the Bible. And, you know, love appears in the Bible, if you read in the King James, it is 547 times in the King James. And in the, um, you know, um, if you think about what, when was the first time that we read about love? And that was in Genesis 2, 22 verse 2. And this is where we read about Isaac who loved meat. So that's the first time that we read about the concept of love. Now, I believe we have a lot of people loving meat here. Can I get an amen? All right. So, yeah, I know in my family, I have some meat lovers in South Africa. We pay manan for a kilo of steak and or 7,000 chill channel. In Korea, it is 50,000. So South Africans love meat. But this is the first time that we read about love. It's there in Genesis 22 verse 2. And then the last time is in Revelation 22 verse 15. Um, those who are not allowed into heaven, those who love and make lies. So we read love about love in the beginning and the end of the Bible. But, you know, the major thing the major theme of the Bible is not love. Did you know that? The major theme is God. The, um, the, the, the word God comes um, 4,106 times in the Bible. So God is the main theme of the Bible, not love. And um, <clears throat> that is a ratio from 1 to 16. So for every one time you read about love, there are 16 times that you will read about God. This is just for a professor or a professor, you know, they like maths and numbers and statistics. So that's, that's it. But, um, you know, our problem is understanding God's love. You know, that's a problem. We don't, how can you understand God's love? How is it possible that some, um, that some, I would say some, that something so special like God can love us when we are not loving, you know. Um, how can I put it? You know, we are not worthy of, of His love. And I think to end, you know, for eternity, we're going to say thank you for your love. I think that will be the main thing in heaven. I think that's why we're going to worship and sing and say Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you so much. Now, our ability to love comes from God. That, you know, you can love. You know, we love meat. We love games. You know, my, my students, they love to play hand fun games. And we love all things. We love other humans. But, and we love God. But where does it come from? Where does love come from? It started with God. In Genesis 1, 26, 27 said, And God said, Let us make man in, in our image, after our own likeness. So there in the beginning of the Bible, God said, I'm going to, you know, like when you make uh, cookies and you put it in the, in the star shape and the, and the round shape, you know, the different shapes. And so there was God and he said, Let's make humans after our image. So we have God's image. You know, we are made in, in God's image. And so already in Genesis, um, that love was put in us because God is love. God is absolutely love. So I believe our ability to love is a major part of being made in the image of God. This is where it all started way back in the beginning. It is not the only thing that we have in our beings that makes us in the image of God, 
but it is surely one of the major traits in a human being, the ability to love. It comes from God. Now, um, the world has quite a different definition of love. So this is the love that we get to know and get, you know, see on TV and see in the news and, well, not the news, but in the magazines and stuff. You know, firstly, it is based primarily on passion, you know, passionate love. And the worldly love is based on feelings. Oh, I, I feel I love you, you know, but um, that is totally wrong. Because as you will discover later in the sermon, love is not a feeling. Love is a choice. Most of the time, it's a choice. And then there are people that are just loving themselves. You know, uh, the, this is the, the worldly point of view. Loving, I'm um, loving yourself. And what can you do for me? You know, if we make this deal, what is in this for me? Or what have you done for me? You know, it is all me, my and I. You know, um, love to self. This is the worldly love. We've been told love means that you never have to say, I'm sorry, you know, and all these things. The only way, you know, <laughs> that this line can be perfect, you know, is when you are married to a perfect person. You know, when we fall in love and we want to get married and that's whole thing, you think this person is perfect. And then you, then you realize that no, the person is not perfect. But, you know, love is a choice. You need to, to choose to love that person. Now, <clears throat> you, uh, I want to go to the next line here. So, where does love come from? I just say that God is love. In 1 John 4 verse 8, it, we read, plainly simple, God is love. So, what is God? God is love. Um, it is very, very simple. And Jeremiah 31 verse 3, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Here I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have, have I drawn thee. So, God is love. And then secondly, Christ. Christ is love. Whom shall separate us from the love of Christ? We've, we've, we've just read it. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. We are sheep for the slaughter, my goodness. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I will always say, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. We get that. But why are we more than conquerors? Because he loved us. That is what makes us more than conquerors. What is more than a conqueror? A conqueror, a more than, than a conqueror is Michelle, my wife. You know, I was working this um, whole month, you know, sweating, teaching kids, you know, sitting on buses and, you know, um, trying to gather a salary. And um, yesterday we went to Costco. And guess what she told me before we went to Costco? She said, um, can you go to the bank? And I like, I know this is where this is going. And she said, can you please draw some money for Costco? And we're going to this and money and money and cash. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is a lot of money, you know. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a very kind, lovable, lovely husband. So I went and I draw the money and she was more than a conqueror. Because I gave her the money, you know, and um, she spent it all. There's nothing left. You know? But my point is just this. This is what is more than a conqueror. You know, one day we were in debt. One day we needed eternal life. One day we needed to, to be forgiven. Jesus went to work. Jesus went to the cross. Jesus did the hard work. He did the sweat, the blood and the tears. And he said, my friend, there's your check. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that God's love? My love <coughs> about the money is such a small comparison to the love of God. Um, <coughs> all right. Excuse me. The Holy Spirit. So Romans 5, verse 3 to 5. Knowing that tribulation produces 
uh, perseverance, preservations, character, character, hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by who? The Holy Spirit who was given to us. Wow, another free gift. The Holy Spirit, the very love of God is in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And I think we miss the Holy Spirit. I think we talk about him, about Jesus and prayer and God and all this thing. But what about the Holy Spirit? You know, have you seen the latest Tesla cars, you know, and the Tesla trucks and all these things? They have this huge battery inside. You know, that is what powered them. And we have a battery inside. And that is the Holy Spirit. You know, God is in heaven. Jesus is sitting on his throne. Where is the Holy Spirit? Is he in heaven? No, he's in you. The Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you've got a battery inside, a battery that will never end. And um, let us this week um, draw from that wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. Then talk about love and uh, what about your heart? Deuteronomium 6 verse 5 says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Just a small part or a small piece of your heart? No, it says with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Brothers and sisters, my question today, I put this to you. Do you love the Lord with all your heart? Or just the Sunday morning part when Pastor Lawrence is behind the pulpit? Do you love the Lord with all your soul? That is your feeling, will, and emotion? Or do you get angry and have unforgiveness when it fits you well? With all your strength. I think we should um, be careful about this. 1 Peter 1.22 Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another with a pure heart. The Holy Spirit again is the love of God in us. Love is from God. We didn't invent love. You know, we didn't invent it. It comes from God. It is absolutely something that he has put into us. Our hearts, good or bad, will determine the extent of what love demonstrated means. Proverbs um, 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of love. Protect your heart. If somebody makes you angry, be quick to forgive. If somebody disappoints you, be quick to forgive. Protect your heart. Really, this is where the issues of life comes from, says the Bible. Now, um, <clears throat> the thing about love. I say that love is a choice, brothers and sisters. Even when it comes to God, man has the option of love. You can say, yes, I will love you, or yes, I will not. Yes, I will love God, yes, I will not. It is an option. You are not programmed. You don't have to love. God asks you to love. So let's say there are four Greek words when it comes to love. The first one is eros, and that is passionate love with essential desire and longing. The modern Greek word eros means the uh, romantic love. So that is the romantic love when like she walks through that door and it's love at first sight and the rest is history. You know, that is eros. And then we have storage, which is the parental love, you know, the love that parents fuel for their babies and their offspring. <clears throat> and this is exclusively used in a family relationships. And then we have the filial love, is brother is brotherly love. It includes well to, to friends, family, you know, that is um, the love to your friends. And then there is the agape love. Now the agape love is the self-sacrificing, unselfish, unlimited love that seeks out the best and acts in the best interest of its objects. Now, hero, storage, filler, all involve deep felt emotions, passions, and feelings. But this agape love does not necessarily involve feelings, but rather a choice. So this love, where you put God first, where you put your brother and sister first, it is a choice. We had that choice. It already started in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, God 
gave the humans a choice and they made their own choice. They, they, they disobeyed God. And then Joshua, you also stand in front of the people just before the promised land. Joshua 24 verse 15, it says, choose for yourselves. Brothers and sisters, there's the word choose. Make a choice. Make a choice, he said, for yourselves. This day, who you will serve. I'm sorry if this comes on very strong, very uh, maybe too harsh, but we need to choose. Make your choice. Open up your mind. This is what Joshua said. And today the word comes to us, brothers and sisters. Choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served, that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the, of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Brothers and sisters, make a choice today. It is your choice. It is absolutely in our hands. And can we all say, like he said, but for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There are many days that I need to just say, put everything aside and say, God, I will serve you. I will love you, even through these circumstances. Proverbs 129, because they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. Again, Proverbs there it says, hated knowledge, did not choose. Love is a choice. Love is more than a feeling. If, you, um, if you've been married for a few years, you will realize love is more than a feeling. Yes, in the beginning it's a feeling. After that, it becomes a choice. A lot of songs, seven out of ten songs, are written about love. If you listen to, to music, it is all about love, love, love. But love is a choice. It is not always that warm feeling in your heart. Um, I want to skip a few things here because I want to share a quick testimony about how I discovered God's love. So many, many years ago, I was called to the full-time ministry um, when I read about the donkey that carried Jesus into Jerusalem, and um, God asked me, will you please become a donkey and carry me into the lives of people? And then that next very day, I went on a youth camp. They put us in a big, dark room, and the youth leaders lined us up, and they touched our head and said, cow, cat, donkey, cow, cat, donkey. So that is how they divided us into teams. So guess what team I ended up in? The donkey team. So I didn't caught it. On the first day, I read about the donkey carrying Jesus to, to Jerusalem. On the Friday, I've, I ended up in the donkey team. And it suddenly, I realized God is calling me. You know, God wants me to be his donkey. And I said, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And God asked me to resign from my job and go to Bible school. And I did it. That Monday, I, I resigned from my job. Everybody thought I was crazy, but God had a plan. And up to this day, God is still taking care of me. But in this time of getting to know the Lord, you know, I, I remember I went to some church services where I saw this pastor preaching and praying for the people and how the Holy Spirit just moved and how God's power just moved and how you could just, you know, some people call it the anointing of the Lord or the presence of the Lord. And how when, when, when these people preach, I just felt so God's presence. And I thought, well, I wish I can be close to the Lord. If they can do it, I can also do it. So I started to pray a lot. I had a hunger for God. And I, and I fasted. I, I remember I fasted for three days. And just praying one prayer, God, where are you? Where are you? I want to be closer to you. There must be more than just um, church, more than just going to Sunday morning service. I want to love you. I want to know you. I wouldn't say it didn't work, but not much changed. Then I remember the day I went to the mountains. We had a log cabin in the mountains near my house. And I stayed for three days. And for three days, I prayed and prayed and prayed and was seeking God. And not much happened. You know, I was disappointed. And then I remember, I don't know if you believe in praying in tongues, 
But there, at the Bible school, there was also a few days that I just stayed in the prayer room, just praying in tongues for days, you know, seeking God. I was like, how can I find God? How can I be closer to God? And um, so this is, you know, I was seeking God in this way. And then one day I was on a farm and I was walking and praying on a farm. And suddenly, well, as I was praying in my heavenly language, suddenly I felt the most beautiful thing. It felt like I walked into this beautiful, this beauty. And I said, God, you are so beautiful. And he said, no, it is not me, it is you. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's me? Are you talking about me? He said, yes, you are my bride. You are so beautiful. This is when I see you. This is what I see. And all I can explain, it is so beautiful. It is just the most beautiful thing that I've experienced. And many days went on and I was seeking God, seeking God. And one day I prayed again on another form, the Kranz. First one said, I said, the Kranz. Freddie knows these, our church places. And I was walking on that form and pray, pray, seeking God. And I said, God, what can I give you? I love you. I, I, you know, I, what can I give you? And I thought, can I give you money? But God doesn't need money. And I thought, can I give you time? God doesn't need time. And then I said one thing. After fasting for days, praying for days, tried everything, worshipping, I just said these words. God, I have nothing to give but my love. I have nothing to give you but my love. And the moment I said that, it was a breakthrough in my life. I remember God's presence in the hot summer sun on that farm came to me like I've never experienced it. And I just felt on the ground and cried and cried and cried because I felt God's love. That's what I was looking for. I got it the moment I, I said, God, I have nothing to give but my love. And God responded to that with such a beautiful love. And to this day, I can still feel that warmth in my heart. Many days I will just lay in my bed, worrying about this and worrying about that and stressed about this. And then I feel God's love. I like God, are you here? <laughs> you know, my thoughts, my thinking was just like, I'm angry with my boss and I'm angry with this. And, and up to this day, there's just this, I remember what I felt that day and I still feel it. Even in times when I am not holy and standing in front of the church when I'm in my laying down and worrying about something. But brothers and sisters, this is the second point of the sermon. The first point was God loves you. The second point is you must love him back. And the good news today is this. Don't try to give something. Please come to church, but don't come to church and think this will impress God. Don't pray the whole night. Don't read your Bible. You will think I'm a strange pastor because they normally tell you, do, 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 do. I tell you, stop it. Stop everything. And just pause and say, okay, God, I have nothing to give you but my love. Start there. And the moment you can pray that from your heart and know nothing that you can do will impress him, then, then I believe maybe in your case it will be the same. Maybe you will feel God's love. And then you come to church. Then you pray. Then you, then you read your Bible. Because then you know him as a friend. Then it's not just a Sunday morning um, um, thing or event. Then God is your personal friend. And as I just told you, I am um, many, many days, I just worried and stress and things. And sometimes I just wake up. I, I feel... Wow, God is in my room. God is here. His love is here. I'm like, wow, God, I'm so glad you're here. I don't deserve your love, but he never goes away. I hope you got something from this, and um, let's close with a prayer. <coughs> Father, thank you today that we could talk about your love. And Lord, only you can take our brothers and sisters and myself, Lord, and lead us to love. Lord, lead us to love you. And um, lead us to understand your love. And Father, I pray, Lord, 
please break through all the barriers in our lives. Lord, break through all the worries, all the burdens, everything that just come between us. Lord, and bring us to that place where I sometimes just walk down the road and just say, God, I love you. That's it. I have nothing more to say than this. And please help my brothers and sisters, Lord, to know the love of Jesus and help us to love from the inside out. Lord, help us to be mirrors in this weeks to come. Lord, please help us to shine your love, Lord, in a dark world, to shine your light. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.